Hi all, and welcome back to the Tech Garage. And this is my Mother's Day project. This is an HP Pavilion 7125. It is very similar to the one that my mom had owned back in 1996. And it's the computer that I really cut my teeth on when I was getting started in IT. I did have a couple before it. I'll show those in a later video. But this one's where I got a lot of my initial experience. Mostly in reloading the system. Let me show the sides here. So it's a, it comes to the back here. They have this nice plastic cover and labels all the ports. I've done some modifications to this one as well. For instance, it still keeps the original Pentium 133 CPU, but the RAM I initially had 16 megabytes as indicated on the sticker here. But I've upgraded it to a total of 80 megabytes. I wish I still had most of the CDs for this thing, but I do still have a copy of Sonic CD and a couple of the other items that it originally would have shipped with. Unfortunately, I had some problems trying to reuse the original restore disk, so unfortunately, I won't be able to show you the the application that came with this called. HP personal page, you're just going to have to look it up either in the description or on your own. It was kind of an answer to the Packard Bell Navigator. However, this one's just going to be straight up Windows 95 OSR2. Let me go ahead and get this thing apart and I'll show you the insides. Alright, here's the inside of the machine. The original sound card unfortunately quit working, but I just left it there and disabled it in the BIOS. This is a Sound Blaster Vibra 16 model CT4180. Basically, it's a cut down Sound Blaster 16. And I have it connected to the CD ROM drive and to the modem, although we're probably not going to use the modem. Speaking of which, this is the original 288 modem it came with. And then I have added in a 3Com Etherlink 3 10 base T Ethernet card. And then here is the replacement for our hard drive. This is a 4 gigabyte CF card and the reader attached. That's emulating a hard disk. My original hard disk for this machine was a Quantum Fireball 1.5 gigabyte drive. But this thing's almost dead. And then apparently this thing also came with a, what I'm guessing is a factory replacement unit. Although this one is 4 gigabytes in size and is from November of 1998. This one's also almost dead. Okay, let me go ahead and pick it up. All right, the front of the unit here, we have the six-speed CD-ROM drive, one of your standard 1.44 megabyte floppy. Behind here is an additional five and a quarter and three and a half bay, but I'm gonna keep the cover and the sticker because I like the way it looks. Let me turn this thing around. Here's the back. Here's the original broken sound card, the CF card, 10 base T Ethernet, the Sound Blaster 16, the modem. So here's our VGA. Here's our parallel, two serial, PS2, and I'm guessing a knockout for what would have been a PS2 connector. And then, of course, we have our back panel here with everything nicely color coded. All right, let me go ahead and put this thing back together and I will show you this thing in operation. Here's the post screen, nothing fancy. As I was saying earlier, I had loaded this thing with Windows 95 OSR2, which has support for FAT32 and USB. Unfortunately, Windows 98 just won't work on this. Here's the login prompt, nothing special, but I did change the sound scheme. Have a listen. To start, press any key. Where's the any key? There's more classic Simpsons where that came from. Anyway, I went ahead and cleaned up the start menu. Accessories are fairly stock, with some driver config tools. I reorganized the productivity applications into this desk folder. However, not all these applications work 100% as they were salvaged from the dying hard disks. Here's the HP Financial Calculator. It's a shame I don't know how to use it. Yeah, 
and here's Microsoft Works 4. For those who don't know, this was effectively the home version ah, of Office, but the file types that it saves to are largely incompatible with Microsoft Office of the time. It will still do word processing and spreadsheet, no problem. You can even have both open at the same time. Doing a sum is very easy. Here's something random, Microsoft Word Viewer. I recall this being on my mom's original machine, but never really had much use for it. Most of the files I dealt with were either of works or rich text format. Ah, here's another, Randy's Icon Editor. I used to make really crude icons for MS-DOS games. Like here, I'll load up OG Duke Nukem's icon. And giving him red eyes has no real effect. And now he's a Super Saiyan. And now he's a Blood Elf. Eh, whatever. I tried to keep the entertainment folder intact. However, I only have a handful of these backed up. Let's go ahead and launch Jezball. My mom once got mad at me for setting a really high score, then typing in, Blow out the candles, you old fart. Okay, enough of that. Zogan asked me to show off Chip's challenge. Y'all remember this gem, right? As I said earlier, I wanted to keep the entertainment folder as it was, so I have a separate games folder for things that I've added. I even have subfolders for game series like Doom, Duke Nukem, Mech Warrior, and SimCity. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and play that. Haha, ha, cute. Let's load up a real city. Ah, boogeyman! Well, I don't think there's anything left to be done with this city. Except maybe destroy it with disasters. An illegal operation. I better go turn myself in to the police. Back in junior high, I actually ordered something from the Scholastic Catalog. 
and it was SimCity Classic. I wanted to mainly see how it was different and test the import city function for SimCity 2000. And this city is more or less complete in hemorrhaging money. Disaster time! Done with Sim games yet. Now Sim Tower. Here's my tower Yeet in reference to the game originally being called Yeet Tower. Pretty much each floor is defined by one type of tenant, I guess you could say. I found this where strategy worked for me. Even the controls here resemble the Macintosh version. And that's enough Ute Tower. One of the bundled bits of software that came with this was Sonic CD for Windows. Sega! This is an earlier build that uses the Dino libraries. And I played this until the disc was practically unreadable. Then made a custom version with the Japanese soundtrack. Let's take a look. I'm going to change it to full screen, but the capture device may not like the change in resolution. <laughs> Sorry, we're going to go ahead and skip the intro. Yeah. <laughs> 
going to go ahead and exit full screen and call it quits on Sonic here. <laughs> Alright, this will conclude part one. Join me for part two when we play the games that Mother did not approve of on her computer. <laughs>